Welcome to the Hunt Museum. And welcome to the annual report for 2021. We move strongly towards the fulfilment of Strategy 2025 and the three impacts that we want to achieve across our three platforms of modernising our museum. The physical, our building, the virtual or digital world and the human networks or communities. Nearly 80% of the KPIs for 2021 were reached despite the half year closure due to the pandemic. Three overarching priorities were reached of online first, turning our thinking inside out, so we start with a virtual, harness more of the generous, energetic, supportive networks of our docents, friends and collaborators by making the Hunt Museum the place to volunteer. A museum in the garden has made the Hunt Museum the place to be in Limerick, a place of fun, exchange, knowledge and learning, getting us closer to our aspiration where we imagine the Hunt Museum as a centre of learning and civic life, a multifaceted destination that attracts and educates and inspires tens of thousands of people over and over again. We'd like to thank the staff, the board, the trust, the volunteers and everyone else who has helped us this year. 2021 saw the museum close for six months and a continuation of our museum at home work and online education programmes with our new teacher advisory committee. We also managed to undertake all the work on the design of our fantastic new museum in a garden and put in place our first sculpture, the iconic Old McMahon, as a two metre CNC cut Trakoya statue. He's become a real insta moment, almost overtaking the painted horses in our front courtyard. The museum in a garden was supported by crowdfunding from our Funder Cobble campaign and private sponsorships, giving us 100,000 euros that was needed to create this new, very well used public realm space in the heart of Limerick City. Public support continued with volunteer planting of 2,000 bulbs in October, which are blooming so beautifully as we film this annual report for 2021. On our four key priorities, collections is the first, and it gained good outreach with addition of new items to the online platforms, increasing access and awareness of our online collections. Our second priority is public engagement, covering exhibitions to increase and renew visitors, our education program and participation or community. On the exhibition front, a Wild Atlantic Way was popular with some great media coverage. The videos and podcasts produced gave it an online dimension. In line with COVID restrictions, we held some outside events such as En Plein Air with some of our amazing local artists and had some painting masterclasses, which were all well attended and created a great buzz in the garden. Ride a Flying Fish was a great success, attracting a whole new audience to the museum. Education had some strong outreach to new schools and kids in Knock Lachine. The joint education project with Limerick City Gallery of Art and Limerick City Museum under the branding of Three Muses continues to enjoy success, including for our Summer Sand Sculpture Festival using each organisation's objects as inspiration for budding sculptors. In participation, docents, as usual, did some incredible work and really got into the invigilation of Rider Flying Fish, including the administration of VR sets and giving tours on both the Garden of Earthly Delights and our own painted epitaph triptych. A new Communities of Culture coordinator breathed new life into the transition year programme with some great results. The One Million Stars project resulted in another Insta moment for the Hunt Museum Courtyard, and more importantly, a raising of awareness around the issue of domestic violence. For innovation, our third priority, the ability to use VR and AR comes as a result of our 3D digitization of objects and has pushed the boundaries of our website links with our content management system. Our fourth priority is funding. We raised sponsorship for belonging and increased awareness of the Hunt Museum with all 27 EU embassies to Ireland as a result. Retail did very well in the last quarter with an average spend of 5.5 euros per visitor compared to the normal seasonal average of 3.5 euros, due in part to the merchandise that we had in for Ride of Flying Fish. Collections had three KPIs for 2021. 
The first was that a third of the collection is digitised as high quality 2 or 3D images. The permanent collection has around 2,000 objects and we now have 676 available as high quality digital images and 125 uploaded as 3D. In addition, 8,000 items from our paper archives were digitised. Our second KPI achieved the increase in outreach and diversification of interactions with our collections, with the addition of new items to online platforms of Europeana, Wikipedia, the Digital Repository Ireland, Sketchfab and Scan the World. Google searches on many of the collection items come up in the first 10 results. For example, the Antrim Cross, Bathsheba Comb or the Memento Mori Skull. The team worked well together and the majority of the tasks set out in our 2021 business plan were addressed, including setting up the process for carrying out the sensitivity audit, which will be complete in 2022, and addressing the issues raised in the Hunt Trust Spot Audit Report. We made good progress on our third KPI with the new collection management system and all records having been transferred and we're commencing on all digital items meeting tier three or four of the Europeana data model. We also added a whole new set of records with our Heritage Ireland opening the archives project. This includes Sybil Connolly's sketches and memorabilia. The big outcome from the switch to a proper collection management system was its direct linking with our new website and the ability to search and explore our collections. The streamlining of input and output reduces our overheads, but also makes for a great user experience on the Explorer section of the new website. We also commenced the Art of Reading in the Middle Ages project and worked with the Hunt Museum education team to produce some brilliant resources such as the Calligraphy and Art of Reading Allowed programmes, making very good use of our unparalleled medieval collection. The Hunt Museum is one of eight partners, including libraries from across Europe, such as the BNF, Bruges Public Library, University Libraries of Leiden, Slovenia and the Czech Republic. As part of the project, we were on the editorial team for an online exhibition, curated two online galleries and two blogs, and delivered two important project documents, including a list of outstanding items to be used in editorial and curatorial activities and the plan for engagement. The medieval objects give context to reading culture in the Middle Ages. We have chosen objects to be photographed and digitised in 3D, which relate to the development of reading during the period. These will be published on Digital Repository Ireland and Europeana. The Hunt medieval objects that will be published relate to manuscript production, such as inkwells, mortars, or these Limoges and ivory panels, which may have been part of treasure bindings on manuscript covers. Our first KPI to deliver a successful and diverse exhibition programme was achieved despite being closed to the public for the first half of the year, which led to the deferring of two exhibitions to 2022. The Harper's Hog Shinners Artist Exhibition sold well, netting nearly €13,000 despite only being viewable online. This was the first time we had used commercial exhibition viewing software, resulting in nearly 13,000 virtual visitors. Our cafe exhibitions included one for the Polish Arts Festival and one for local artist Ashing Burke O'Connor. A Wild Atlantic Way was very well received, with survey responses of 71% finding the exhibition brilliant and 50% inspirational. 87% said they learned a lot. It attracted good numbers for the domestic tourism market. Ride a Flying Fish, the Hieronymus Bosch virtual reality exhibition was a real departure from our standard art exhibition bringing in a new audience where 60% of the visitors surveyed said they had never been to the museum before. A direct link to our own 16th century painted triptych was made to the Garden of Earthly Delights as we start the process of tying the temporary gallery exhibitions more closely to the objects in our collections. The virtual element of Ride a Flying Fish helped us go some way to meeting our second KPI of reaching a global audience with three virtual exhibitions. Initial research into the cost benefits of virtual exhibition has shown them to not have a great return on investment. We are therefore going to carry out a full strategic review in 2022 on how to use virtual exhibitions to reach global audiences. Despite closure, 25% of primary and post-primary schools in Limerick City and County used Hunt Museum resources or participated in our programmes, both online and through physical interaction. Three new post-primary schools, Skolvira Gosida and Desmond College, both based in Newcastle West, 
and Kalash to either Agus Yosef in Abbey Field attended. One new primary school, Kukora National School, participated in our educational programmes. One new significant partnership with Confirm Smart Manufacturing was developed, which enabled us to deliver a highly innovative and imaginative Science Week programme, allowing us to meet our Deliver One partnership with Learning Resources KPI. Our joint education programme, The Three Muses, with Limerick City Gallery of Art and Limerick Museum, was a little slow in 2021, but gained some pace with the return of primary schools in the autumn. Online outreach and on-site workshops on art and identity were delivered with them. The autumn term also saw a rejuvenation of attendance by post-primary schools. Our Ride a Flying Fish workshop programme was very well received by them. I really enjoyed the students' interpretation of Hieronymus Bosch's Garden of Earthly Delights artwork and we had great fun comparing the medieval society in which he lived to our current society. Using these Fiora headsets, they loved the immersive opportunities to enter this artwork, which really brought it to life for them. Without question, the third panel of this triptych artwork on Hell was most popular with the boys. The level of engagement the students showed throughout the tours was phenomenal as they had many questions and were eager to learn more. Teachers were very impressed with the overall experience and many planned to build on the learning through extension activities back at school. Our Ride a Flying Fish loan box was put at their disposal for this purpose. Three digital teaching and learning resources were delivered for the ARMA project. Three more will be delivered in 2022. We had some fun at the IMA Annual Education Outreach Online Conference showcasing our virtual museum workshop program using the open source platform, Mozilla Hubs. Many thanks to Adam Stoneman and Hannah Bloom Teske for their work on this. Our public engagement, participation and community had one KPI to consolidate, our community outreach. And we achieved this through the active register of volunteers and two key projects, Communities of Culture and One Million Stars. Communities of Culture was in its fourth round to work with TY students. 24 TY students from CBS Section Street participated in a programme centred around experiential learning in the context of local community, stories, culture and history. Over a period of 12 weeks, the students took part in workshops and creative sessions, capturing audio and video stories from the north and south side of Limerick. This included the Vikings, the Abbey Fishermen, pastimes and games, and resulted in a selection of short videos which can be presented to primary school students as part of their local history education. The One Million Stars to End Violence project launched on the 8th of March 2021, which was International Women's Day. It brought local communities together to weave stars to demonstrate support and solidarity with those who experience domestic violence in the home. It also highlighted the relevant support available through ADAPT Domestic Abuse Services. A consortium of local partners has come together to deliver this project in Limerick, including the Hunt Museum, ADAPT Domestic Abuse Services, Seawell, Mental Health Ireland and Limerick City and County Council. Limerick communities wove 10,000 stars and an installation created by Limerick City Build was unveiled by Mayor Daniel Butler in the Hunt Museum courtyard on the 8th of December. The docents came back in force when restrictions were lifted and were very happy to be back in harness and numbered 42 at the end of 2021. In accordance with the plans, four out of five projects were completed. These were the wild geese and garden and building tours, the rejuvenation of the library project and development of tours for Wild Atlantic Way and Ride a Flying Fish. A hunt docent training program was put in place and the mentoring program to fulfill it ran very well. The docents continue to actively participate in the museum with monthly poetry sessions, art appreciation sessions, coffee mornings, and hold their regular monthly meeting. A newsletter started to go out weekly, helping all the docents stay abreast of what is happening in the museum. We are very pleased that the Friends of the Hunt Museum continued 
to be able to support the museum, despite the curtailment of activities due to COVID-19 for the first half of the year and again in December. Once restrictions became lighter, we had a few highlights, a gathering in my garden in June, a special reception and presentation of a Margaret Walsh commissioned ceramic plaque for Naomi O'Nolan in July, who retired after many years as head of collections and exhibitions. A visit was made to Springfield Castle in September, and thanks to the Silver Circle, another was organized to the Silver and Clock Museums in Waterford. Lectures from Anne Nash on William Trevor, from Dr. Una Brummel on the Irish-American John Quinn, and one from David Burney, who compared two wedding feasts in paintings. Although the Christmas luncheon had to be canceled, tickets for the raffle were drawn, allowing for a substantial contribution to the education and outreach projects in the museum. In summary, it was a difficult year, with the threat of COVID, restrictions ever present, but we held together with a very dedicated council, a loyal membership, emails, Zoom, etc., and look forward to returning to some of our usual activities in 2022. Deliver a Hunt Lab was our first KPI for innovation, and we have the beginnings of one with our new website section, Hunt Museum Studio, where we showcase what others have created using our public domain digital objects. In 2021, this included postcards from the edge where the LSAD second year students produced some physical postcards on four contemporary social issues and contexts, Black Lives Matter, environment, gender and origins, all using objects from the museum for inspiration. This was achieved in lockdown using our digital files and selling the postcards in the courtyard of the Hunt Museum. This section of the new website shows our Heritage Week foray into augmented reality as we seek to engage new audiences with our objects. Apollo learned to dance, supporting our second KPI to collide physical and virtual display in the museum, which linked to the work of creating a museum and a garden. Old McMahon became a two meter high iconic statue in the new garden. Thanks to help from the ESB, Michael McLaughlin of Monaru, Arup and transition year students from Arts Goldbora Corbley and Kalosh de Kiron Prum. Our third KPI proved challenging with the pandemic and museum closure, but we did manage to increase digital collaboration with communities. We held two scanathons with Ken Coleman of LSAD and Scan the World's John Beck and Elisa Dantona and put together a group of volunteers for weekly scanning sessions. We increased our 3D collection from 95 to 130 and produced more models for the objects that will be escaping our walls to live in the garden in 2022. The digitization of our painted triptych for the Ride of Flying Fish exhibition was also a highlight. You can see things that were not visible to the naked eye, and we will publish a story and make a new digital exhibit in 2022. Two objectives were set out. The first was to have a legacy giving program in place. This was not achieved as we concentrated our efforts on sponsorship for our 2022 Belonging Exhibition. But the second, relating to the funding of 50,000 for health and wellbeing and the schools programme was. Three Muses continued with funding from Limerick City and County Council for their two thirds contribution to the programme linked to the Gallery of Art and the City Museum. And we gained an additional 19,000 for our community related work from the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gwelta, Sport and Media for several health and wellbeing projects to be carried out in 2022. Most importantly, we saw a diversification of funding with the winning of a couple of EU projects and Heritage Island grants. Our retail arm got a boost with a new online shop as part of the new website just before Christmas. And the exhibition related items for a wild and antique way and ride a flying fish sold well. Our shift to move to local and ethically sourced products served us well with retail sales coming in at 2019 figures despite six months of closure. Five year plan in place for building maintenance was the KPI. An action was taken to improve drainage with the building of the new garden and repoint the education wing and take care of the broken guttering and pipes. 
project management has become embedded in the organization with an agile project management training refresher session for all staff. Overall, four projects completed and three projects are ongoing, and the use of agile is becoming more organic in the organization, fulfilling this KPI in 2021. The KPI visitor experience is improved, was difficult to manage in a year of six months of closure, but a plan is in place for 2022. Some great events were held in the new garden, including chess and bull tournaments and a really dynamic culture night. The big achievement of 2021 was the full redesign, content creation and delivery of a new website. Besides a completely different look and feel, which is in line with the Hunt Museum brand and making use of objects from our rich collection, those objects are now much more discoverable thanks to the integration of our new content management system, which has a website explorer function. The website received the accolade of being selected as one of 100 notable design projects for the 2021 The 100 Archive, a platform for design in Ireland. The second KPI was to help increase the number of friends and docents and to broaden volunteer involvement. Docents are very definitely thriving and we have a greater diversity and age range in place. Friends proved a little more challenging in terms of numbers, but the status quo was maintained, which books the international trends for such associations. The last KPI was to make the Hunt Museum the place to be in 2021. Also quite a tall order in a year of six months of closure, but the launch of the museum in a garden really helped and the numbers of young people and families enjoying the space increased dramatically. Our visitor numbers held stable against 2020 figures, with more than 95% being domestic visitors. The website, however, increased in traffic by nearly 25% and our social media platforms combined have shown an overall growth of almost 40%. 2021 wasn't too bad a year, thanks to the government and the department's financial support. Together with the funding from our projects, our turnover was one and a quarter million euros against a cost base of a similar amount. I think the highlight for me, as for my fellow docents, was to be able to meet in person. After nearly two years of lockdown, we found it very strange. One of the things that we love about being a docent is meeting other docents from all sorts of backgrounds, sharing our information and generally catching up. So having our monthly meeting where we could all meet together was superb. And the last meeting we had nearly every docent, 40 plus which was just fantastic. My highlight of the last year was seeing Apollo dance uh, with, along with a, a group from the University of Limerick, Alan, led by Alan Dormer. We were able to create a, an augmented reality experience that allowed the visitors to virtually interact with the object and learn a little bit about the symbolism of the, the crafts that are depicted on the object itself. One of my highlights of 2021 was the opening up the archives project where we digitized Sybil Connolly's uh, sketches and memorabilia. The highlight of 2021 for me was definitely the Wild Atlantic Way exhibition. It was just great to see people back in the gallery space after so long being closed from COVID. So it was just fantastic to see people interacting with art again in, in person rather than virtually or, or online. My highlight for 2021 was researching and contacting local craftspeople and uh, stocking their beautiful and exclusive products in our gift shop. My education highlight for 2021 was most definitely our partnership with Confirm Smart Manufacturing. Uh, it enabled us to deliver a fun and innovative Science Week programme for post-primary schools, exploring the use and application of smart technology to art. Uh, my highlight of 2021 was starting to work for the Hunt Museum in the role of communities of culture. It's been an exciting period um, where we've got really engaged with uh, our local communities and it's just been joyous to see the transformation of a group of 24 TY students. My highlight of 2021 at the Hunt Museum was the continuation of engaging with various different communities uh, throughout the Limerick city and county and bringing people together even during lockdown times and encouraging people to stay connected. One Million Stars and the Hunt Museum in the Garden projects were key and significant in keeping this connection and engagement going. There were so many great things. Uh, I loved the launch of the garden uh, and I loved seeing people really utilizing the space, playing chess, playing pool um, every morning uh, when it's good weather and I come to work. 
I see people playing boo and when we lock up the museum, I really um, see people very reluctantly giving up um, the chess pieces. So I think that's the highlight, people really enjoying the garden. My highlight for 2021 was reopening the doors to the Hunt Museum and welcoming back our visitors, volunteers and friends. And we hope to welcome very many more back in 2022.